I love the conga! No one here have a conga? I want to celebrate. Welcome to Bad Weapon Academy, where we take a look at the worst weapons TF2 has to offer, and I show you how to best utilize them. You know, we've taken a look at a few weapons so far, and while none of them are the best in their arsenal, I don't feel we've really crossed the line into a full-on terrible weapon yet. They've mostly been mediocre or underwhelming. Let's change that today with the punished meme weapon of years gone by, the Ulapool Kaber. Oh, Kaber, it feels like a lifetime ago when we would sticky jump over to the two fort battlements and one-shot the oblivious snipers on the enemy team. But ever since Gunmetal in 2015, we've drifted further and further apart, and things just haven't been the same. The description reads that a sober person would throw it, but now the sad reality is that a sober person would throw it in the dumpster. That dumpster would then explode. The Kaber was rarely used as a serious melee option in its heyday. It was almost always a sniper terrorizer, used in conjunction with the Sticky Jumper. However, it also had the same effect on medics, which is a big problem for competitive. It basically meant that a demo could Sticky Jump to mid for free because the Sticky Jumper gives the class with 200 plus damage primaries free instantaneous across the map mobility, and somehow that wasn't the weapon that got nerfed into the ground. And they could one-shot the med at minimal cost because even if he died, trading a demo for a med is worth it every single time to give your med uber advantage, essentially forcing both demos to do the same thing. When Valve came around to nerf it for this reason in Gunmetal, they gave it the old Valve treatment and made it nearly unusable. And this is what we have today, so let's look at some stats. The stats of the Kaber are kind of weird in that they aren't exactly listed on the weapon's description and there's quite a few things missing. Essentially, when you hit an enemy with the Kaber, it'll explode, damaging your target, your enemies around them, and yourself. The explosion also has a small ramp-up effect similar to the rocket launcher. It doesn't really come into play too often since unless you miss your enemy completely and hit the wall next to them or the ground, you'll be doing full ramp-up as you're right in their face. Once you hit them, the base melee damage and the explosion damage are counted as one hit combining the 55 base damage with the 83 explosion damage, assuming you got full ramp up, giving you a 123 damage hit, just shy of killing light classes. You'll only be able to consistently one-shot Sandman scouts, Kunai spies, and Big Earner spies with this thing. Well, why would you need to one-shot someone just for the weapon to be good? That's a bit of a high standard. True. But keep in mind that not only does this weapon not have random critical hits, which are unfortunately still a staple in pups that grant any class the ability to one-shot anything shy of a soldier and heavy by clicking on them with their melee, even if it completely invalidates their biggest <laughs> fucking weakness, but also when you consider that the caber breaks after one use, meaning afterwards you're stuck with 55 melee damage with no random crits, and a slow swing speed unless you run all the way back to the resupply cabinet or die trying. It also has a very slow deploy speed, meaning that even as a last resort to deal a little extra damage to an up-close target, it totally fails since Demo is already vulnerable to getting rushed down easily. Why even bother bringing out this thing when you can take your chances in killing whoever is giving you the business with a couple of pipes? Or better yet, if you're using a melee option, just throw all your chips in and go for a random crit that won't deal self-damage. The Kaber deals so much damage to you that even if you do actually manage to hit your target, if they know you exist and have been damaging you, you're dead anyway from self-damage. Not to mention it launches you in the air when you blow it up, meaning it could slow you down when you're trying to escape and lead to your death even if you do manage to survive the explosion. Its utility as a meme weapon to terrorize snipers is invalidated because it can't even one-shot them, 
leaving the loose cannon as a better option for that since at least double dogs can one-shot light classes, and its utility as an actual melee weapon for regular use is invalidated because it's too slow and too risky for a measly 23 extra damage at best over a pipe grenade, and you only get to use it one time. So why even bother with this thing? What can you possibly do with it that makes it even remotely fun to use? Well, luckily for me, half of my job has already been done for me. A user by the name of Toofty, who has a lot more experience than me in playing Demo Man and also making better videos than me, has made an excellent video talking about the Kaber, its strengths and weaknesses, and the only good way to use it. I highly recommend watching his video because his channel is better than mine. Anyway, to summarize his video, if sticky jumping and regular melee use aren't options, the only thing left is Kaber Knight. By equipping a shield, you gain the ability to get a guaranteed critical strike with the Kaber, and this is incredibly powerful. If you manage to land the critical on a heavy, you can one-shot him with a whopping 350 damage hit that deals anywhere from 150 to 180 damage to anyone too close to him. This works best in areas where large groups of enemies are likely to clump up together, such as the control point, a dispenser, or the payload card. Obviously, this still has its downsides. For starters, the sweet spot you have to hit in order to crit someone is very precise, and it won't even mini-crit with shield charges for some inexplicable reason. I don't know if this is a bug or intentional, but what I do know is a bug is that often, the caver won't even damage enemies at all. It'll show the blown up model as if you did actually hit someone, but hitting someone again will show you that, no, it's perfectly fine. It's kind of like when you clearly headshot someone to the point of seeing blood on their face, but you still do zero damage. I fucking hate this when it happens, and it happens all the goddamn time. By playing Kaber Knight, you turn yourself into an unreliable suicide bomber. Even if you do manage to get a disgusting crit on a large group of enemies, you'll still be left with a neutered melee weapon at the end of it, and you'll be missing a good chunk of health to boot. So what's the best way we can mitigate the weaknesses of the set and make it as effective as possible? Well, despite how restricting the Kaber Knight style seems on paper, you actually have a good amount of variety in your primary and secondary slots between the four grenade launchers, the boots, and the three shields. If you want to use boots, you're dedicating yourself to going full Kaber Knight. This has the upside of a slight speed boost, 25 more health, increased mobility, and an increase in your charge upon killing an enemy. This is good for more defensive holds, as you'll be able to kill someone, very likely survive the attack, then run back a little bit faster thanks to the speed boost and slight shield recharge. Plus, with the extra mobility of the boots, you'll be able to hit your targets much easier if they try to get out of your way. If you want to see this loadout used to its fullest effect, Solar Light made a short video where he goes on a ridiculous 30 kill streak with it. However, in offensive situations, you lack the ability to deal with sentries and you're left relatively defenseless once your caber is gone until your charge comes back, which is where my favorite choice comes in. Hybrid Caber Knight with a Grenade Launcher. The two that stand out the most are the Iron Bomber and the Loose Cannon, both for the same reason, mobility. If you don't have your charge, you're a slow and easy target, and without stickies, you won't be able to reach certain flank routes that other demos can, which is important as your enemies being unaware of you makes getting picks easier and gives you a larger window to pick the perfect moment to strike. With the Iron Bomber's predictable grenades, you can easily make jumps you couldn't before, and the Loose Cannon has a similar yet more extreme function. The Loose Cannon is more useful in its mobility utility for covering long distances with its cannon jump, which is useful if your spawn point is far away, but you still want to get your caper back quickly without dying. Keep in mind, cannon jumping is not that easy, and if you're not careful you can get yourself killed doing it and just wasting time, so make sure you practice with it. The lock and load and stock grenade launcher are also decent choices, but the iron bomber is definitely go-to as it hits a perfect balance of an offensive tool that's great for dealing with sentries and players who manage to close the distance on you, and a mobility tool that lets you flank easier. It also works great as an escape tool once you do charge into a crowd, as the camera will launch you skywards, giving you a high ground against your opponents to lob some grenades at them as you fly backwards away from danger. Also, the grenades are just objectively easier to aim because their hitbox is fucking massive compared to the other grenades. I don't know if that's intentional or not. For any grenade launcher, one of the best strategies is to lob a grenade or two at the group you're going to charge at to soften them up, 
That way, even if your caber doesn't crit, which it probably won't, you'll still likely get a kill or two and do some serious damage. Keep in mind, if you're using the loose cannon, your cannons may actually fling enemies well out of your range and cause them to retreat, so you won't be able to pick them off. You kind of want to play as a sort of grenades-only demo for a while. You have your pipes, you have your shield in case you need to make a getaway, but you also have a secret weapon, the fuck this guy in particular stick. As for the shields, they all have their upsides and drawbacks. The Tide Turner I'd say is the weakest, which is unfortunate as if the Caber would just mini crit on shield charges, I could see it being a lot better. You get decent resistances, you get most of your charge back after a kill, and you get absolutely insane mobility and the ability to pick out your targets much easier but it's all at the cost of damage. The entire strength of the Caber Knight set is to give yourself a massive guaranteed critical explosion that can wipe out an entire control point of people if you're lucky, and the Tide Turner only lets you target lower health enemies. It's really only good for closing the gap on already weakened enemies rather than dealing insane damage, and even with the Caber being destroyed, a crit from a charge will still do 165 damage, still enough to one-shot medics and snipers you will be able to get back to spawn much more often and much more quickly if you do manage to kill someone though, which is definitely a big bonus. The charge and charge gives you the best resistances and guaranteed crits, but the shield bash just doesn't do that much damage. The splendid screen has the lowest resistances, but the strongest shield bash while recharging a lot faster, and can actually be considered a legitimate secondary weapon to use against people without having to use up your caber. However, a hidden downside for the caber knight loadout is that because the splendid screen can boop your enemies, it can actually launch them out of your effective range, and since the caber lacks the extra melee range of the swords, there's not much you can do if this happens except go to your grenade launcher. Your counters will be standard demo knight counters, sentries for full caber knight and pyros who air blast you especially, although I would say to a certain extent heavies are the major exception and they're actually a valid target due to your ability to one-shot them, unlike with regular demo knight loadouts. Unless they're using the Natasha to kill your momentum before you reach them, they're one of the easiest enemies to hit. Because if you use the grenade launchers, or if you're not using the tide turner, you'll effectively be running in a straight line, you need to make sure you're not only the proper distance to get the crit just right, but also that you'll be able to hit your target at all, and revved up heavies are perfect for this. Even if they're being overhealed, once the caber launches you backwards, you can just fling a pipe or two his way and he's toast. Though you'll want to make sure your timing is right, as if the heavy is focusing you down before your charge even starts, he can easily kill you before you reach him. If you want to make sure you get him, you can ask your medics on your team to buff you before you go in for a charge. You'll want to play on maps that facilitate this kind of playstyle. The more choke heavy, the better, since it gives your enemies less options for escape. It's also a good idea to avoid maps with high amounts of verticality if you're going full caber knight, since you won't be able to deal with enemies that have the high ground. So maps like Frontier are not so great for this set. Frontier especially since the train can block your line of sight on potential targets and prevent you from charging at a large group of enemies. The spawn is also ridiculously high up, which makes it a pain in the ass to get back to if you want to get your caper back. Playing on offense and defense have their benefits and downsides too. Offense essentially forces you to run a grenade launcher since there are so many sentries and pubs, but it's usually a very short walk back to the resupply cabinet, and your respawn time is a lot shorter if you do end up dying. Defense on certain maps, payload especially, can not only set your spawn point extremely far back, but also in difficult to reach places, though you'll usually have teleporters up to get to the front lines much more often if you do die. However, this is highly dependent on the map and game mode though. For example, Gorge on offense is a terrible idea for the set in general, as you can't reach the resupply cabinet at all without a cannon jump once you cap the first point, and Dust Bowl on defense is right outside the resupply cabinet. Once you find that perfect map though, with the best choke points that you can run straight into your enemies with, man there's nothing else like it. If you want to use the caber these days, this is without question the best way to do it. Is this the most effective way to play Demo Man? No. Will it get you killed a lot? Yes. Will the caber sometimes fuck you over by not even exploding at all? Undoubtedly. Is this also really fucking fun? Hell yes it is. Playing Caber Knight for this video has awoken the inner teenager in me from years ago when I first started playing TF2. It just unlocks this absolutely giddy delight upon fucking deleting someone with this utterly stupid weapon. This strategy is embodied by two words. Dumb. 
fun. When it works, it's kind of like the baby face in that you get into a good rhythm, but unlike the baby face, when it doesn't work, it makes you want to rip your hair out and bash your skull against a brick wall because it's not necessarily the weapon's stats that are fucking you over, but more its absolute refusal to fucking explode properly or actually crit. But when you get that 350 damage nuke, it's a thing of beauty, and nothing else in the game really comes close to giving you that feeling. Now, how do we bring the caver back to its former glory? Easy answer. Just fucking... Just let us one-shot light classes again, man. Please. Look, I'm a sniper main, and I wanted to be a sniper terrorizer again. Come on, it's fine. I'm vouching for the demos for once. I don't do this often, so don't get used to it. Beyond that, being able to one-shot light classes gives it the ability to be a major scout and spy deterrent. Classes that demos have to deal with often, which gives it a little bit of utility even outside of meme strategies. I'd also give it a recharge meter that can be refilled quicker with ammo packs, but not dispensers. That might be a little bit too good. Look, if snipers can refill a jar of pee in a few seconds, if Scout can materialize baseballs, cleavers, and Christmas baubles into existence, and if Heavy can do what I'm only assuming is regurgitating his sandwich after eating it and then eating it again, then I think Demo can fix his caper with a little bit of time. I know he's not that drunk. Then just fix the issue where it doesn't explode even when it hits someone and let me festivize it, and we'll have her baby back. The caber is in a really sad state right now, and it has been for a while. But that doesn't mean we can't have some fun with it. For the time being, go out there and hit those heavies with some high-yield Scottish face removal and tell them fish sent ya. Yeah. <laughs>